Yeah, we're excited to play Oklahoma. I mean, they're good, quality team, well coached. They're playing as well as they played all year, and just kind of similar boat to us. So it's going to be a good game. I, they're, they're a good team. I've watched them on film. You know, the Texas game was a good game. They've played Kansas, beat Kansas. I mean, they're they're playing really well. So we're, we're going to have to play better than we played the last two games for plan on winning this one. Thank you, Coach. Uh, let's start with Charlie Potter. Yeah, hey, Coach, we just saw that the Kentucky's dealing with some, some COVID issues. Are, are you guys good from that standpoint? What's the latest there? Yeah, I mean, we're good. I mean, you know, it's just something everybody's got to deal with, to be honest with you, and different. Uh, we want to play games. So we, uh, we're we going to play. We're, uh, you know, we've kind of had to deal with it all year. I think our medical team's done a really good job making sure that when we have had issues that way, they haven't been too big of a problem to where we can't play the game. You know, if when we do video, we're not doing it in our video room anymore. We're doing it in the practice gym when everybody's spread out. We're making sure that all that contact tracing stuff, you know, if somebody happens to get it, we're not taking down um, an entire team. So we're good to go that way. We really want to play games. I, I felt like all along, you know, if I'm a player, I want to play as many games as I possibly can. So as a coach, I'm going to do everything in my power, our trainer's power, to make sure that these guys are given the opportunity to play as many games as we can possibly get them to play. So we're, we're, we're playing. We're, we're good, you know, good enough to where we've got enough guys. That's the other thing, too. Like, there's a minimum number of guys you have to have. Like, I mean, we've played games without our full roster this year, you know, enough times like we uh it gives other guys a chance to play so even even if we've had times when we haven't had everybody available we're, we're still planning on playing at any time we have a chance to, to play a game next up uh Cecil Hurt coach just to follow up on that you were banged up Tuesday what's the the status on first of all Bruner was at least able to shoot around um and then Rojas, Herb, uh, Reese, they all seem to be banged up. Yeah, they are. We're, we're, we're actually really banged up right now. I mean, Bruner's, Bruner's was still able to shoot, but he's not anywhere close to being able to play um, at this stage. So I, it's looking still like two to, two to three maybe more weeks for him. Uh, with the guys that we did have available, I mean, Herb hasn't practiced since the game. He's... Still banged up, but you know, knowing Herb, he's going to go. I mean, you could tell he wasn't 100 percent at Kentucky, but he was still almost had a triple double. So he'll uh, hopefully be a little bit better than he was against Kentucky. But you know, we're trying to get him uh, as rest as we can for the games. Reese um, held him out of yesterday's practice. Try to get him better. Looked uh, better today. Hopefully, doesn't aggravate it in the game. But you know, he's able to go. Rojas. Didn't practice yesterday either. Just he's still trying to recover from uh, the medical deal he had, and he's he's just he's lost weight. He's got to get his um, he's got to get everything back up. I mean, he's got to be able to eat and drink fluid. So he he went today. Um, you know, we we should have everybody uh, except for Bruner available for the game. I don't know that they'll be a hundred percent, but they'll all be available. Uh, next up, Cliff Brunt from the Associated Press. Yeah, Coach, uh, do you see any similarities perhaps in the way uh, Alabama and Oklahoma go about doing things in terms of uh, the way they play, their use of seniors, and then also um, just the number of different guys that can hurt you scoring-wise? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I uh, got a ton of respect for Coach Kruger, so to even be mentioned that we'd be doing things similar, I, you know, I take that as a compliment. I think he does things the right way. I think he's built the program. He's built the culture. They're unselfish. The ball moves. They they're high IQ guys. They're well well coached on the defensive end. They do have older veteran guys that know what they're doing. Similar to us having you know five seniors on the roster. You know, obviously we we've all got our own ways of doing it, but they're they're as similar to us as anybody we played for for a little while and just 
their style. They've gone playing smaller a lot now. You know, um, when Manic was out uh, for you know a couple weeks, and then they uh, changed their starting lineup up. They've stayed that way. But now he comes back. He plays you know decent amount of minutes at the five. They they make it a little harder to guard when they go smaller that way. You know, and we we've done that at times before. But they they've got you know lineups that they can put out there that can switch everything and you know I, they're they're a good team i mean they, they do a great job so yeah i they're probably more similar to us than anybody we've played here recently next up uh tyler martin hey coach you mentioned after the kentucky game how impressed you were with juan gary you mentioned now all the guys were kind of banged up where do you kind of see his role uh continuing to develop and what have you what have you liked about him this so far this season i mean he plays really hard all the time He's got a great attitude. He's uh, getting better and better. You know, he couldn't, he didn't get cleared till I think the week of the first game. So he missed all that practice time all summer and fall to where he could go live like that. So he's still catching up on some of that, but he, he makes up for a lot of that type of stuff with just his energy, his effort, his uh, athletic ability. So, I, you know, his role is going to continue to increase, obviously, with Rojas being a, uh, out like he was, he got a few more minutes. You know, and he's undersized playing the five. We're trying to play him more minutes at the four. You know, but you've got to get, you know, we don't don't have Bruner. So, you know, when, you know, Reese can't play 40 minutes and, you know, Reese needs subs and Keon Ambrose, you know, kind of times, you know, we, we're trying to get more production out of all of them, really. You know, Reese, Keon. Row, Wani, and kind of whoever's playing well amongst those guys is going to get more minutes that game. And, you know, Wani was pretty good against Kentucky. He's been pretty good for us defensive wise and rebounding wise uh, every time he's come in this year so far. Let's uh, go to Eric Bailey next. Coach, thanks for your time today. Um, I asked Lon Kruger this question also. Oklahoma and Alabama are tradition rich football schools. Both basketball programs are now nationally ranked near the top of their respective conferences and have earned national respect. What are the benefits of playing at a school and coaching at a school primarily known for football? Well, I mean, I don't know what uh, I'd like be interested to see what Lon has to say. He's done it for a lot longer than me and he's been at other programs as well. But on my end, I mean, I've got a lot of resources, you know, obviously Big time football brings in a lot, so there's really nothing we're lacking here as far as resources that that, that the athletes need to be provided. I think that's a big one. I, I think um, you can kind of do your thing in the background, you know, for a large part of the year. You know, everybody's concerned about football, you know, most most of the year round. Obviously, right now we're in the middle of basketball, and there's football news is a little bit light, but. You know, all fall, nobody's really too worried about basketball. You can just kind of focus on getting your team ready, getting them ready to play, doing your thing. And um, everybody's focused on football. And you can kind of work, work in the uh, dark lights, if you will, and, and get you guys ready to go without too much, uh, too many distractions. The other thing I'd say is it, it helps in recruiting, I think, to bring them to the app. Now, we couldn't bring anybody on campus this year, but last year, when they have a big time football environment like that, I think I think it's great for official visits. I think it helps with kids knowing about Alabama nationally. You know, football program has given us a national brand for a long time here, and people know about Alabama as soon as you call them. So I think there's a lot of positives to it. All right, next up, uh, Tony Chicalis. Nate, giving. Given how banged up your team is, how, how much does it help to go against maybe a smaller team in, in Oklahoma in terms of maybe being able to conserve some of those big guys on, you know, on your bench? Well, there's, sometimes they're small. Their starting center's not small. I mean, he's one of the top shot blockers in the country. And uh, depending on who they bring off the bench, you know, Victor's kind of a bigger shot blocker as well. So they've got two guys that – they go big. Now, they're not big as in starting four, six, ten, and starting five, six, eleven, seven foot, you know, like you may see with Kentucky when they got Saar and Ware, Saar and Jackson on the floor. So 
I think it does help that way, uh, but we still do, you know, we still got to contend with two legitimate centers that have real size. And so, you know, Reese is 6'10 and 250 and moves well. So I think we've got that matchup. So when they do go small, it, you know, we, we maybe matches up a little bit better. But yeah, I, you know, I can't wait to get Bruner back. Hopefully he's, you know, as healthy as he can be when, you know, we get him back in a few weeks. But until then, I, you know, Hopefully, Keon Ambrose minutes, he starts getting more and more confident in him. Reese can hopefully get a little more healthy. I think that's maybe his issue right now. But yeah, I, I, you know, wani has been able to, get, if Wani can do what he did against Kentucky, then we can probably play him some minutes at the five against anybody, to be honest with you. All right, we got three more questions in the queue, so we'll finish with these three. Let's start with Scott Griffin first. Hey, Nate, uh, obviously this has got a March feel to it, right? So. Is that something you openly discuss with the team uh, or do the, you know, it's just the next game on the schedule do, you know? No, uh, I, I told them this, this one's going to go a long ways come seeding time in March. So if we're trying to make some noise in March, you know, the higher the seeds you get, the easier it is to make a run like you want to run. And, you know, the better we do in this game, the more it's going to help. You know, you, I, I think I looked. I think there's six teams in the Big 12 in the top 20 or 25 in Ken Palm uh, this week. Uh, so, like, even, you know, their ne Oklahoma's next games are going to be against quality teams. You know, they've got a lot of quality games left on their schedule. So, and when, when I looked on Ken Palm uh, in the last couple of days, this is the highest ranked team left on our schedule. So, and it's on the road. So, this is a huge game, you know, for – many different reasons. But, you know, our guys got to realize that. Hopefully we play better than we have the last two games. You know, I feel like we've shown that we know how to win close games these last two, but we haven't been particularly sharp. We're going to have to be a lot sharper against Oklahoma. Next up, Haley Sutton. Hey, Coach. Um, we know how well SEC play has gone for you guys this season. Is there a benefit to taking a break and playing in games that are non-conference like this SEC challenge, or do you? How does that affect, I guess, the momentum in conference play? Uh, I like it because I think when your only non-conference games come in November and December, you're a different team in November and December than you are at the end of January. We're obviously much, much better right now than we were back in November and December. So I, I like being able to prove that you're you know, good, better against somebody out of league come the end of January, the middle of your conference play. And it's kind of a reset. You know, you've, we've played half the conference. Just go test ourselves against somebody really good non-conference, then come back and finish the second half of conference. So I like the way it's set up here. All right, let's finish up with Steve Moulton. Frito-Lay Frito Steve. Hey, Coach. Uh, <laughs> um as banged up as you guys are, just from an injury standpoint, I do wonder, I know you scale back at this time of year, but has it at all affected how you would normally scale back your practices due to all the injuries? A little bit. Um, I mean, we typically try to start scaling back, you know, middle of January anyways. You know, we want our we want our guys playing their best basketball come middle of March, not the middle of January. So if if you know if you're not smart with how you monitor their their loads, load management, if you will, I guess would be the term they use it now. But I, I've been trying to do this since high school. Like, you know, you're kind of in the grind. So we typically would be scaling back anyways. But now we can't afford too many more injuries. So we we're not. We're still doing a lot of live stuff, but it's not flying up and down the floor live. You know, typically I would be doing, we do a transition series, kind of works on our transition game a lot. We haven't done that for a while. Just trying to avoid drills and things where guys could get injured, being that we're already really banged up. So it's affected us a little bit when we're, we're planning the practice plan, more with what we do within the time that we have. We're, we're, the time that we're using is about normal for this time of the year though. All right. Thank you, Coach.